One day, I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. Hi Russell, it, it's me, Dr. McElvoy. Well, it's not my real name. My real name's Ed, and um, well, yes, yes, it. Uh, that's right. I am the Ed, the the one that that Stephen and and to a much lesser extent Chris told you about. Um, I've been writing to them for for quite some considerable time about um, well, Doctor Who and. Um, Look, this isn't easy for me to say. Your era of Doctor Who didn't really inspire me, Russell. I, I, I wasn't tempted to write about it back in the day because it was a bit broad for my tastes, a bit, you know, a bit Daily Mirror. I, I wasn't really interested. But now you're back, well... It feels wrong to leave you out. I mean, you've done so much and you're going to do so much. So it's worth asking the question. Now you're back. Should you be? I don't know the answer. Well, I do. It's no. But for the purposes of this video grammatic presentation, I'm going to pretend that I don't know the answer. And we're going to explore that issue together. So, um, yeah, I guess we... We'd better get going. Hi Russell, this is my quiet place. This is where I tend to think about Doctor Who sometimes. Not a lot, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, have a little sip of coffee and um, consider what it used to be like and what it's like now. And this is a very special place for me, Russell. I find that when I come here, I can be at ease with myself. I can be alone with my thoughts. I can walk, look at a wise old tree that, that looks over me. And uh, sometimes when I'm here, I, if I think really hard, I think I can forget about the worst moments of your tenure. I can forget about the camp. I can forget about the Doctor Strange preoccupation with popular culture. I even forget about Christmas with Kylie Minogue. I mean, to think, you know, we used to mock John Nathan Turner for stinking up the TARDIS with the likes of Hale and Pace. Bonnie Langford and Ken Dodd. But you normalise that sort of light entertainment and beagling its way into our favourite show, didn't you, Russell? You made it seem part of the dramaturgical design. I mean, what in the name of a gay man's taste is going on? Of course, Russell, both uh, myself and my lawyer would like to clarify that there is absolutely nothing wrong, naturally, with uh, one's homosexual proclivities informing the dramaturgical design of a piece of work. No, absolutely not. But what I'm suggesting to you is that in certain types of show, that camp instinct can be slightly ruinous. 
And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, hang on. Hang on a minute, Ed. Hold up. Doctor Who was was camp in the day. It was silly. You see all those funny rubber monsters and that giant rat and all of that nonsense. But the difference, I suggest, is that back in the day when Doctor Who was made on a shoestring and, you know, the producers just tried the best they could to uh, adapt and interpret the ideas on the page into visual shorthand, um, armed with nothing more than, you know, the cupboard contents and 25 quid, they did their best. There's a difference between doing that um, on a budget and it looking sort of stupid to modern eyes, assuming you can't make the imaginative bridge between what someone was trying to do and what they did, in which case I pity you. But um, there's a difference between that, I suggest, and deliberately making that part of the aesthetic of the show. Do you see the difference, Russell? Do you? Hey, not too close. We're in HD, okay? <laughs> yeah. The BBC have abandoned Doctor Who. Doctor Who is that poor kid from AI who's left in the woods by his parents when they don't want him anymore. After 17 years, I don't know what to do with it. Stephen Moffat, may he rest in peace, and Chris, who is destined to rest forever in a giant vat of vanilla essence, are two iterations of the same attitude. The idea that this is a show for children, that, that it should be attuned to the fandom's juvenile instincts. Camp, which let's not forget kills drama, and it eats through it like a xenomorph's nosebleed, is the tonal watchword here. Now, as the audience has peeled away like, I know, cheap paint applied to brass, they've given it to you and your production company, Russell. Bad Wolf. And as we know from Star Trek, when the owning corporation puts the baby in the basket and tosses it over a bridge, is it a mission of failure? In desperation, they hope someone will find the baby and look after it better than they could. But it didn't work for the Cobblepots in Batman Returns. And it won't work for Auntie either. <sighs> Roussel. If I may call you Roussel. Look, I understand the BBC's decision to sack Doctor Who off and not take a chance on a new showrunner. Why not give it to you? You allegedly understand it, don't you? You're the father of Doctor Who to a whole generation of fans. Except for those of us with slightly longer memories who remember Doctor Who's upbringing a little bit differently, you're not the father of Doctor Who, are you? You're the guy who took over after a long hiatus and didn't fully understand the potential of the show. Doctor Who may have been unloved by 1989 by a mainstream audience, but those of us who were still watching and those of us who had the pleasure of discovering those later seasons during the uh, interregnum saw a show that was in a, the process of evolution that was transitioning to a sort of more mercurial adult form of storytelling difficult to go from Andrew Cartmel's master plan to to you Particularly because there'd been this wonderful line of novels in the interim that were built on Cartmel's plan and in fact uh, delivered it. I suppose there was nowhere to go but downhill from there, but I don't know, to Billy Piper, to sex offenders like Noel Clark and John Barryman. can be so very cruel sometimes. Russell, I won't lie to you. When I think about the new era of Doctor Who, I have to have a lie down because the Doc's about to come at us from all sides. I've got pink eye just thinking about it. But, look, David Tennant, again? I mean, some people think it's, 
just because you're an egotistical megalomaniac, you know, someone who's going to reset Doctor Who and try and obliterate everything that came after you. But actually, it's a reaction to what came before. Because thanks to Chris Chibnall, well, just transitioning to uh, the personification of progressivism won't do anymore, will it? And besides which, the audience is over all that sort of thing. They, they don't care that Judy Gat was Scottish. Look, if you were serious that this was a new Doctor, I'm sure there'll be some sci-fi bullshit to explain it, by the way, but if you were really serious, wouldn't you have David Tennant differentiate his characterization from his old one? You know, maybe use his own accent or something. Are we really supposed to believe that this is a new Doctor just because he's got a different coloured suit? We're not that stupid. But, you know, I get it. It's about resetting the brand, restoring its luster, generating excitement. Then, when you've got the audience back and they're talking about the show again, well, you can gently slide into shooty. I mean, once Doctor Who has become a universe, is there really enough content out there, really enough ideas to turn it into a sort of synergist online content engine? I mean, I don't know. The answer's no. You see, Roussel, you may have missed dispatches. Oh, uh, um, bolognese uh, with penne and um, some apricot cheese. Very nice. You may have missed dispatches, but universes are on their way out. It's very last decade. Marvel, dead. Star Wars, dead. Star Trek. Dying. I mean, all right, give us an Eighth Doctor show. Give us a an Amy Pond series. I'd watch an Amy Pond series, but... The problem with creating a universe is that those Disney dollars, that Faustian pact you made, they're going to expect you to be keep producing stuff for years and years and years. You better have a pool of riders ready to go. You better have the best graded people in the business because you're going to need them. I mean, look at Marvel. Look at Star Wars. Look at Star Trek. They didn't choose the best graded people in the business and they're in the shit. Who cries for old Doctor Who? That lovely old show about a middle-aged space uncle and his oddball companions. A show that led its audience rather than being led by them. Will we ever see its like again? Hey, not too close. We're in HD, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still, we've always got the old episodes, haven't we, Russell? It's not as if you've got the time or the inclination to go back and insert little notes in the margins or vandalise them for modern audiences. <laughs>